Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. I thank you again for joining me today. Well, today I want to talk about an interesting subject and a healthy one. And that's called uh, clean and unclean meats or clean and unclean food. So we know we know that, uh, there's, of course, there's some uh, vegetation and plants that we shouldn't eat because they're poisonous. So that would be considered unclean and perhaps fatal. But uh, talking about meats here. So with that said and done, I'm going to read some scriptures to you, but I'm also going to point out some things. Uh, what is what is clean and unclean meats, things like that. And there's a word called uh, kosher. And, and a kosher basically is a uh, means to be straight or right by implication to be acceptable also to uh, succeed or prosper. And that's in Strong's uh, number uh, 3787. If you could look that up in the Strong's con uh, Concordance. Uh, but kosher, a lot, a lot of the, most, you know, the religious uh, Jews, they, they always want kosher meats. They don't eat pig swine and certain other types of meat. Um, some, uh, some Christians do that too. Christians do that. And also unbelievers. Unbelievers do that because of a health reason. They want to stay in shape, fit. They want to, uh, you know, not have uh, medical conditions like heart problems or clogged arteries or overweight. They don't want none of that. Uh, but anyways, if you go to uh, Genesis chapter 7, two, uh, verse 2, it talks about Noah uh, when it comes to the animals going in the ark. The clean were by sevens and the unclean were by twos, and there's a certain reason for that. And uh, like the clean animals, or unclean animals, do they serve a purpose? Yeah, they serve a purpose. Sure, we, we cannot eat them or anything, but they serve a purpose. And the best uh, example I could say is I've heard uh, evangelists and other preachers say that they're basically the, stu uh, the, the janitors of the earth. They're scavengers. They're the janitors of earth. Uh, like the catfish go down and eat all the you know, whatever, the yucky stuff down at the bottom. Uh, you got scavengers uh, like coyotes in them and eat carcasses and things like that. Uh, but if you go to now, we go to go to Genesis uh, chapter nine, three, verse six. It says how we are uh, people are permitted to eat meat, but not the blood or the fat, not the blood. And it has to be clean meat. It has to be clean meat. And uh, and and here's a good example. Here's a, here's a good example. On get your Bibles out, and check out those those verses. Read 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 those chapters, verses, whatever. But also. Uh, uh, I want to go to uh, get your book out to Daniel. Here's here's a here's a here's a good example. Daniel cha uh, chapter one, uh, five verse twenty one. This is when uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, has had a party. He he's pumping himself up, and he wanted uh, all the subjects to conform to his ways of eating, diets, and worship, and all kinds of things. And I'm gonna start out with uh, chapter five to 21 or verse 5 to 21 and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank to so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king now among these were of the children of judah uh you know, daniel hananiah mishael and uh azariah Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names for uh, he gave he gave Daniel uh, another name and uh, to Hananiah of uh, Shadrach and uh, to uh, Mishael of Mishak and to uh, Azariah of uh, uh, Bedingo, Bedingo um, excuse me and uh, he just changed their name more their names more to more of a more of a Babylonian name. But well, they did keep their true names too. They're, they stuck to their Hebrew roots. And Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Thereof he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And the reason he's saying this and they are believing this is because 
most likely the, the king's uh, food and meat was was unhealthy. It was unclean meat. Maybe like pig swine, big cooked pig on on a on a tray, things like that, or pig's head, whatever. Uh, now Elohim had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my sovereign, the king, who hath appointed you your meat and your drink. For why should uh, he see your faces worse likening than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make uh, me endangered, my head to the king. So his head's sort of on a, he's asking, why are you putting my head on a chopping block? King, I'd be mad at me. And said Daniel to, uh, Melzar, who, who the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and uh, Azariah, uh, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and, and water to drink. Uh, then let our uh, countenances be uh, looked upon before thee and the countenance of, my, of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he's he's basically create, making a challenge. We were going to eat our foods and drink our water. And then number of days here, compare us with uh, the ones eating this uh, bad food, junk food or fast food, <laughs> today's terms, but uh, and see and, and physically look at us, see who looks healthier and have a, has good complexion, things like that. So he consented to them in this manner and proved them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their countenances were uh, fairer and fatter and flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Then Melzar took away the portions of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them a pulse. As for the four children, uh, Elohim gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding of all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king uh, communed with them, and among them all was found none like, like them guys, Daniel and his friends as they stood before the king. And in all matters and wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. Uh, and Daniel continued even unto the first king, uh, king of uh, King Cyrus later on. But the point is, it's not just the, the health, well, they more you know, have fat cheeks and complexions are good, but by good nourishment, there's also able, able to think clearer and better. They, they the, nutri the nutrients, the uh, proteins, all this stuff was feeding their minds and it was keeping them s sober, sober, not, not, not like they're drunk or anything, but sober minded. That's what it is. Keeping them sober minded. Uh, now let's go to, uh, I'm going to go to Leviticus. We're going to talk about the difference between clean and unclean meat. Uh, we'll go back to Leviticus here, uh, right here. Leviticus chapter what, 11. <clears throat> chapter 11, and uh, this is where... Uh, the Almighty Himself instructs about what is good and what is what what isn't good. The meats. Uh, now I'm going to start out first with uh, this is Leviticus chapter 11, one through eight. Okay, one through eight here. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses and Aaron, saying to them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which you shall eat among the uh, beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parteth the hoof, parts the hoof, and is cloven footed, and cheweth the cud among the beast that uh, shall she shall eat. And there's different animals for that. 
you got to remember that. Remember, remember these right here. Nevertheless, uh, these shall you not eat of them that chew the cud, or uh, of them that divide the hoof uh, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean, clean among you. So even though he he chews chews the cur, cud, uh, he still doesn't have that that foot requirement. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean. And the swine, though he divided the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. And their flesh shall not you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. They are unclean. So they're unclean. And that's that's right there. I'm gonna give you a list here later on about the 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 animals uh, that are appropriate or inappropriate to eat. But if we go to uh, uh, go to verses nine through twelve, this talks about the aquatic life, the fish, and you know you got sharks, whales, whatever. These shall you eat of the they are of the waters whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters. And the seas and the rivers, them you shall eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination to you. You shall not eat of their flesh, but you shall have their. But you shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins or scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. Uh, now we'll go to uh, 13, verses 13 to 19. These are the unclean birds now. And these are they which you shall uh, have, uh, have an abomination among the fowls. Or the birds that shall not be eaten, they are an abomination, and that is the eagle and uh, uh, what's this, the ostrich and the uh, osprey, and the vulture and the kite after its kind, even the raven after its kind, and the owl and the night hawk and the cockow and the hawk after his kind. Uh, and the little owl and the cormorant, cormorant, and the great owl and the swan and the pelican and the gear eagle, and the stork, the heron, after her kind, and the lapwing and the the bat, the bat. You remember the coronavirus bat? There's a reason why you don't eat unclean meats. They also they also bring up certain diseases that that you know transfer from animals to humans and we've seen that not just with the the COVID-19 thing there's other ones in the past that did the same thing uh but these are the un, them are the unclean the unclean uh animals and clean uh but I want to got a list here somewhere I'll read on to read to you uh let's see Is biblically clean fish must have both fins and scales, uh, albacore, uh, aloe weaves, weaves uh, anacovi, barracuda, bass, black drum, black fish, black back, bluebill, sunfish, bluefish, blue runner, bonitos, Boston bluefish. Bowfin, uh, buffalo fish, butterfish, carp, chub, uh, cod, crappy, crevel, croaker, darter, uh, flounder, frostfish, ice fish, smelt, gabby. Let's see, gabby, where was that? 
grayling, group, groupies, groupers, grunts, golf pike, haddock, hack, halibut, uh, hard tail, herring, horse, uh, mackerel, kingfish, long nose sucker, uh, macaroon, uh, manahaden, mullet, muscalingum, uh, orange, ru orange, ruffy, perch, Picker jack, uh, pigfish, pike, pilchard, pollock, pollock, <coughs> excuse me, pompano, porgy, uh, red drums, red fin, uh, red snapper, red stripped uh, sucker, rabalo, rockfish, salmon, sardine, scup, red uh, sea bass, sergeant fish, shad, Sheephead, silver hack, silver side smelt, snook, uh, Spanish mackerel, stripped bass, sucker, tarpon, uh, tilapia, trout, tuna, weak fish, white fish, white sucker, whiting, uh, yellow perch. Now, the biblically unclean ones right here, biblically, biblically unclean fish and seafood. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, abalone, bullhead, catfish, clam, crab, crayfish, eel, uh, krill, lobster, muzzle, oyster, paddlefish, scallop, uh, sculpin, shark, shrimp, squid, sicklebacks, sturgeon, swordfish, whale. Now, here's a clean red meat. Must chew the cud and have a divided hoof. Antelope, beef, buffalo, deer, elk, goat, moose, and sheep. And a clean fowl here. Cannot be a raptor or scavenger, of course, and that's a chicken, dove, duck, goose, grouse, uh, pheasant, quail, and uh, turkey. And Thanksgiving just came about, and it's good to know. That turkey's clean meat and tastes good too, real good. But uh, I just wanted to try to give you a, give you a proper list. I know in the Bible it just says about the separated cloven foot and eating a cud and don't be a raptor, things like that. But having scales. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a little little list. Now is a little more than I expected to uh, tell you. And there's some of the stuff in there. I've, Quite frankly, I don't even know what it is. Some of the, some of the meats or animals, uh, but that's just me. I'm not smart. I'm not the most wisest person in the world, but I make out the best with what I've got. <clears throat> but anyways, that's all I want to say about the clean and unclean meats. I can't think of anything else to say. It's uh, except uh, in, the, in the New Testament how they talk. They do talk about how. Your body is the temple for the Holy Spirit, and you should uh, at least consider having those healthy eating habits or healthy habits in general for your body. Your body is your temple, and uh, and without your without your body or just say your health or your some of your limbs or something not working right, that's not good for you. And uh, I pray pray all of you uh, stay healthy and well well being and. Things like that, and prosperous, prosperous also in the the word of Yahweh. And with that said and done, please give me a big thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and also subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Until we meet again, brothers and sisters, peace out and shalom.